Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to take you back to the past, to 2016 specifically, when Titanfall 2 came out in October of 2016, like I said. Titanfall 2 was an incredible game, one of my favorite first-person shooters of all time, had an amazing campaign. Multiplayer was great too, although it wasn't as compelling as the first game. This, the actual game itself, kind of tanked, didn't really recover. But game came out, it was fantastic. Unfortunately though, Titanfall 2 bombed. Why did Titanfall 2 fail? Well, I made a video on it. You guys can check it out right here. But the TLDR is, it was sandwiched between two of the biggest first-person shooting franchises that exist, Battlefield and Call of Duty. No matter the quality of Titanfall 2, no matter how good this game was, no matter how compelling an experience it was, didn't have a chance. There's too many COD players out there. There's too many Battlefield players out there. They will not drop their favorite franchises to pick up a game in the middle of already playing those games in the first place. So Titanfall 2 met a quick death and it was unfortunate because Titanfall 2 deserved much better. And the most unfortunate part about it is that so many gamers out there never got to experience Titanfall 2 for what it was and the community of Titanfall 2 players for the multiplayer scene had no way to grow and prosper given the fact that everyone was gravitating towards a new COD game and new Battlefield games right in the middle of this experience. So not only did people not get to experience Titanfall 2 in its glory, and not only did Titanfall 2 sell poorly, but the multiplayer scene faded away quicker than you could possibly believe. And that is unfortunate because I was actually one of those players that loved to play TF2, especially loving those Titans. It was very fun. So after Titanfall 2 failed, the industry wondered what was going to happen to Respawn in Titanfall because, well, in this day and age, there's no room for failure, especially when games cost this much to produce. So usually if you fail as a video game, you just never recover. You never come back. And that is especially true for EA because they also own the Star Wars license. And one year later, Battlefront 2 was to be released, which was already in development. So they don't really need to shift resources to a franchise that might fail again when they have Star Wars on their hand, which they know no matter what they do to it, it's gonna have a fantastic reception. And the most ironic part about the Titanfall situation was that without a shadow of a doubt, Titanfall 2 was the best first person shooter in 2016. You guys might have your preferences, but I think for the most part, it's really easy to say that Titanfall easily beat out Battlefield 1 and Infinite Warfare, which were not the best COD games and definitely not the best Battlefield games to ever be released, but this was the best Titanfall game yet. Advise caution until we have further information. Rift in time? How does that happen? So not only did Titanfall 2 fail because EA stuffed it inside these other two franchise windows, and the fact that Titanfall 2 was the best game that year, it just made the situation feel that much worse. Titanfall 2 was no longer a, an exclusive to Xbox game, which some people didn't know about, especially PlayStation players. That caused some problems as well. So Titanfall 2 faded into oblivion because of EA, but the years went on. In 2017, EA released Battlefront 2, which was, I think without a shadow of a doubt, the worst received Battlefront game and the worst received EA game of all time. The following year, EA released Battlefield 5, which was most certainly, I think, also one of the most poorly received EA games of all time, given just a whole bunch of stuff that happened before its launch. So not only did EA butcher Titanfall's chances in 2016, but the following two years released two very bad first-person shooters. And it wasn't even that the games were inherently bad. Um, you can actually have some fun in Battlefront 2. The universe is there. Battlefield 5 has some nice shooting mechanics, but just everything that happened leading up to those games caused them to be poorly received by the industry. Microtransactions and monetization for Battlefront, and then of course, political stuff with Battlefield 5. So we know EA can make proper video games, it's just everything surrounding them, the storm of controversies and conflicts leading up to those games and following them post-release is just all bad. But the interesting thing about 2018 was that the industry was still talking about Titanfall 3. We assumed that Titanfall 3 was in development. There was quite a bit of talk in 2018 about what was going to be for Titanfall, what happened with Titanfall 2, and where the franchise was going. We assumed that it was in development at least halfway through, if not almost complete, and hopefully getting a release date between March and summer of 2019, which is the perfect release window for a franchise like Titanfall, so it doesn't have to compete with EA's other big games in fall and winter. Publicly and secretly, I think many first-person shooting fans were just thinking about Titanfall in 2019, imagining what enhancements could come to the franchise, imagining what could become of the Titans, and all the cool stuff that they had built for Titanfall 2. Would there be an expansion of the narrative? What could they do with the mechanics? Would there be Battle Royale? 
And not the least of which, when would EA announce Titanfall 3? And that brings us to 2019. Currently, Titanfall 3 is in development, but not by Respawn Entertainment. And I think that's going to shock a lot of people. And also, of course, we don't know if Titanfall 3 is actually going to release in 2019. Probably not. This could be assumed because 2019 is in the perfect rotation for Battlefront, which those games come out every two years, at least the last two games. But in a shocking turn of events, EA and Respawn actually released a Titanfall-inspired game called Apex Legends a few days ago. There was no hype, there was no lead-up, and there was absolutely no communication from EA about what this game was going to be before the release came to be. Traditionally speaking, companies don't like to do this because hype culture brings in a lot of sales. But, well, they did it anyway. And it was weird because Apex Legends is one of the most incredible battle royale games, let alone first-person shooting games, that I've played in a long time. It's an amazing game that fixed some of the most notorious and most contemporary problems with the battle royale genre. It's quick. It's easy to get into, there's plenty of controls to keep your squad together, there's communications inside the game's ping system, and of course you can revive teammates that have already died at spawn beacons. This is a solution to one of the biggest problems in the BR culture, which is the fact that if you die in one of these games, you can't play anymore. You literally have to go to the main screen and start a new game. But not in Apex Legends, there's always a reason to actually play out the match in its entirety. Premium quality AAA battle royale game and it's free. Can you believe it? I can't. But there's always a dark side to EA, and most certainly there is with Apex Legends. Apex Legends is essentially doing the exact same thing that Battlefield and Call of Duty did to Titanfall 2 in 2016 with Anthem. Like I said earlier, in 2016, Titanfall 2 failed because it was set in the midst of all this competition. And that's exactly what's happening to Firestorm, Battlefield 5's upcoming Battle Royale mode that's set to release in March. Titanfall 2 didn't necessarily fail because it was set within the window of Battlefield and Call of Duty, but because it was surrounded by so much competition. Mind you, competition that was generated from EA themselves, because of course EA owns the rights to Titanfall and Battlefield. So here we are, it's deja vu all over again in 2019. Battlefield 5 is going to release Firestorm next month, but already the system is populated by players who are flooding the market towards Apex Legends. In what delusional reality would you release these two games or game modes even within the same galaxy of time periods? It makes absolutely no sense that Apex Legends came to the market now, although it's really great and I'm glad it did, because Firestorm is going to suffer. It's been noted by Respawn and EA that Apex Legends is going to be a fully featured game that's going to get extensive continuous updates to it that make it very, very attractive to play for a long, long time, especially because it's skill-based. Not only is Apex Legends a contender for the best BR game on the market, but it's going to get support to become the most played BR game on the market in 2019. It makes no sense to me to pair these games up in the same time window because you're essentially forcing them to compete with each other even though you own both games. Sure, players can play each, but they will choose one game over the other. If they do that, then one of those games is most likely going to succeed, or game modes. And if they don't do that, both games are going to be spread too thin, especially considering there are multiple other BR games much, much more popular standing right now in competition with both of them. It's pretty much a fact by now that there's not enough players out there in the world to fill all of these huge, huge games for long periods of time. People will choose games over other games. I just don't understand why you would ever do this because you're giving players too many options in an already crowded market. It's no secret by now that games need to be released in the proper windows so that they are given a chance to grow and succeed. There's only two possible outcomes here. Either one game fails while the other one succeeds because players will choose which one they want to play, or both games will just go down because there's not enough players to satisfy both populations at the same time. I feel pretty bad for BF fans because I think Apex Legends is so good that not many of those players are going to be willing to go over to Firestorm once it comes out, especially because there's going to be a price tag associated with it if they don't already own Battlefield 5. It's interesting, in 2016 EA made it basically impossible for Titanfall to succeed. But in 2019 EA gave the Titanfall inspired Apex Legends so much of a head start that it may have crippled once again the chances of another game, Battlefield, and its version of Battle Royale, Firestorm. So what do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comment section and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. We'll see you guys in our next video. Take care until then.